Hi friends. I'm going to do another video about expat banking. And I get excited about this. But I don't want this to be a rant and I don't want at any part of this video for it to sound like I'm yelling at you. The video I did last Friday called Expat Banking Beware. I'll put a link up here to it if you haven't seen it. It was about me going to the bank and depositing a US dollar check in my Mexican bank account and the fee that I paid in terms of the exchange rate when the bank exchanges dollars to pesos was $53, 7.2% of what I deposited. That's what the video was about. I got 500 comments, and 300 of them were, thank you very much for the information, we're going to do our best to avoid that. And another 100 comments asked intelligent questions, which I appreciate and enjoy answering. Thank you. And then another 100 comments, más o menos, were either oh, this is how we do it, we transfer it from this bank to that bank, and uh, it's great. And then mixed into that hundred were comments like, oh, uh, you told us what the problem was, but you didn't tell us what the solution was. In that video, I talk about going to Costco and Walmart, and the ATM, and using my Capital One 360 debit card and paying no fees, paying no ISA international transaction fees, and getting an exchange rate that was the current market exchange rate in that nanosecond. Paid nothing in the spread for the exchange rate. And it's this spread in exchange rates that I want to talk about in particular today. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Another thing that motivated me to do this video was I had a conversation at Walmart a couple of days ago after that video, and it was with a couple from Canada who approached me at Walmart and said, Oh, thank you. Uh, we really like your videos. And then we talked about that video, and I asked them, how do you get your money? You, your, your money is in Canadian dollars, and you're living in Mexico and spending pesos. How do you do that? And here was their answer. Well, our, Me our Canadian bank works with our Mexican bank, and they transfer it, and it doesn't cost me anything. There are no fees. I said, it doesn't cost you anything. Have you checked the exchange rate? Oh yeah, and it's like 1.9%. And I said, are you sure that's percent and not a part of the exchange rate? He said, no, it's like a percent of the exchange rate, 1.9. I said, I pulled my phone out of my pocket and I said, let's calculate this for you. You say it's not costing you very much because they make this transfer for for you from Canadian dollars to pesos into your Mexican bank account for free. 1.9 exchange points, if the exchange points should be 19 to 1, now that's US dollars, but we calculated it out for him in terms of Canadian dollars and 1.9 off of the exchange rate, he's paying $38 per thousand Canadian dollars for each transfer. And I said, so you're living on what here? A couple thousand dollars a month? Yeah. Okay. It's costing you 38 times 2, 76 dollars, Canadian dollars per month to get your money down here in Mexico. And he said he was going to go and try it a different way and see if I was right. I had another conversation 
with my neighbor. I said, she, she came in last week when I was editing that first video. And, and so the conversation started. So how do you get your money? She said, I go and I use my credit card and I um, uh, make deposits, uh, cash advances into my Mexican bank account. I said, well, um, aren't you paying fees and interest? She said, well, I don't think it's very much. I said, well, go get your bank statement. She came back with her, she went home, she came back with her laptop and showed me uh, her online account. When you make a cash advance, well, let me preface this. She said, and I don't pay anything because I pay it off every month, the credit card, and so they're not charging me any interest. And so when you make a cash advance, the interest starts right away. And I don't care if you have it set up for automatic payoff. And I looked, and sure enough, she was spend, she's spending about $4,000 a month. Um, and that's not entirely living expenses, it's other stuff, but that's her business. Uh, $348 in interest and fees and ISA fees, that's how much she's spending. $348 a month for interest and... I felt bad for her. And so we're figuring out how to get her a Charles Schwab account. Anyway, um, one of the ways that I avoid all of these fees and uh, the spread on the exchange rate is I use a Capital One 360 account, that's a checking account, debit card. So I'm thinking all week about making this video and one of the ways that I recommend that people uh, avoid ISA fees um, minimize their ATM transactions uh, and avoid the spread in exchange rates is to use a Capital One 360 debit card. So on the news last night I see that Capital One has admitted that some hacker in Seattle has uh, breached their data and they've lost a hundred million application records from their uh, account holders. <laughs> so it gives me pause for making this video, but let me tell you how I have perceived that as a potential threat for years and how I deal with it. Um, I don't have a lot of money, but what money I do have, like you, I value it. I keep it in a savings account in a U.S. bank. Now, I have a business manager that I've had for many, many years who takes care of some of my other businesses and stuff, and she has access to a checking account. She writes checks. She pays my bills in the United States. Uh, I have some rental properties. And she can write checks uh, when I do my... Uh, taxes, she sends a check to the IRS and the state of Oregon. She sends birthday checks to my kids and my grandkids. She has total access to my uh, checking account. Well, I trust the lady uh, with my money. That's not the point. After 20 years, I trust the lady with my money. But here's what I did from day one. I limit the amount of money that's in that account. And it's limited to about a month's worth of bills that she has to pay. And I do that by transferring from another account where there is more money into that account. That's how I make sure that I am only at risk for one month's worth of bills. Now, I do the same thing with my Capital One 360 account. I transfer money from another account that only I and my wife have access to into my Capital One 360 account. And I do about $1,000 at a time. So I'm not at risk for a lot of money. I mean, $1,000 is a lot of money. 
but I have limited my risk to that amount. And there's the thousand dollars in there when I transfer it, but after, you know, halfway through the month, there isn't that much money in there until I transfer some more. So at any given time, that's the most I'm at risk for. And most of the time I'm at risk for a two or three hundred dollar balance till I transfer some more money in there. So when I see that on the news last night about 360, uh, uh, Capital One being uh, having a data breach, am I terribly scared all of a sudden because, ooh, no, I'm not. Because I can afford to lose two or three hundred dollars and I don't want to, but it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be significant in the big picture. So that's how I limit my risk. Let's talk about exchange rates. Exchange rates are the most important thing you need to pay attention to if you're an expat living in a country where you're spending money in a different currency than you're getting income. For me, again, it's US dollars and pesos. When I first moved down here, the exchange rate was about 10 to 1. <clears throat> so, $1 got me 10 pesos. And in the nearly 20 years that I've lived here, the exchange rate uh, has gone up because the U.S. dollar is stronger. Now, my Social Security has not gone up significantly. Um, every time they give you a COLA raise of 20 or 30 bucks in a, a month, they take it back with the Medicare uh, payment. So I'm, I'm not making any more money from Social Security than I was 10 years ago. But living in Mexico, the exchange rate now is nearly 20 to 1. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means that even though the U.S. government hasn't given me a Social Security raise in all these years, the exchange rate has doubled my spendable income. Where I used to get 10,000 pesos a month on a 10 to 1 exchange rate, I'm now getting 20,000 pesos per month. That's on $1,000. Of course, the cost of living has gone up in Mexico also, but it hasn't doubled. So, if you're living in the United States on your Social Security and you'd like to get a raise, come to Mexico. So, what do we do about paying attention to the exchange rate? First of all, we need a Banking 101 lesson here. Anytime you convert money from one currency to another and you use this bank, transfers it to that bank, which is what happens when I deposit a U.S. dollar check in my Mexican bank account. Or you use a transfer service. There are a number of them. They're internet-based and, you know, they're like the uh, 21st century version of Western Union. And Western Union still uh, operates too, as far as I know. I have many, many, many comments after making a video about beware of this with people who say, oh, well, the way I do it is uh, I use XYZ uh, online transfer service and they only charge me $5. Follow the money. The $5 fee is nothing. If they're doing a 1.3 spread on the exchange rate with you, it's costing you 73 or $4 per thousand to do that. 
Forget about the $5. It's the exchange rate that's important. Here's what I would like you to do if you're living in a country where you spending a currency that's not where you're getting your income. Just do what you do. If it's, I get money with an ATM, or I get money with a credit card, or I make a transfer from bank to bank, or I use a transfer service to do it, do it. Do a hundred dollars, do a thousand dollars, do, just do it, and then go back and figure the exchange rate. It's really easy to do. You take how many pesos, in my case, I got. And you divide it by how many dollars came out of my bank total, including the fees. It's very simple. I just went to the dentist. Uh, it was four hundred and sixty two dollars came out of my bank account from a eight thousand eight hundred peso uh, charge. And I calculated it right away, and it was like 19 to 1. And the current exchange rate is 19.09 to 1. So I'm paying nothing in terms of the exchange rate spread. It's the exchange rate spread that all banks and all transfer services will make their money on. Anytime you pay for a service, whether it's the guy who just cleaned my pool, or it's a waiter at a restaurant, or it's the guy who changes your oil at Jiffy Lube, or it's your bank who transfers money from one place to another for you, it's a service and you will always pay for a service. Now, they lead you on. It's like, it's like a magic trick. It's like, oh, look over here, we don't have any fees. Check your Les Schwab exchange rate. We don't have any fees. We refund your ATM charges. While over here, in this hand, what you didn't see was they took big bucks out of your account for the spread in the exchange rate. Oh, it's only $5 to use XYZ transfer service to get your money from that U.S. bank to this Mexican bank. In the meantime, you paid 80 bucks to transfer $1,000. Check the exchange rate and stop letting banks make money off of you that way. It's not necessary. Now, okay, that's the problem that I've described. Here's my solution. There are other solutions, but here's my solution. It's not to find a good deal and the best exchange rate at a bank. Best exchange rate implies <laughs> that you've shopped around and found the best service or the least charge for the service, but you're still buying a service. My Capital One 360 debit card, I use it to make purchases here in Mexico and lots and lots and lots of businesses, unlike 10 years ago, can now do it. They do it with this handheld thing they stick your card into. Every mom and pop grocery store can do it. Restaurants do it. I do it at the hardware store. I do it at the dentist. I do it at Walmart. I do it at Costco. I use my debit card. The money comes out of my account, there's no international exchange fee, and there's no spread, and this is the important part, there's no spread in the exchange rate. I get the current market exchange rate at that moment. That's what you need to look at, and that's what you need to check. That's how I do it. That's the solution to get yourself a no-fee account that doesn't charge you for international exchange rates. Again, Les Schwab says they refund your ATM charge. I don't have a Les Schwab account. 
please, somebody, do the check on the exchange rate because they're an investment banking company. They're not like a commercial bank in the sense that a lot of other commercial banks are. I don't know this. I don't have a Schwab account, a Charles Schwab account. Somebody please check and tell me, are they hitting you on the exchange rate spread? Figure it out and let me know, please. Because if they are, I'm going to stop recommending them. I recommend Capital One, a 360 checking account. That's what I use, and that's what I recommend. <laughs> and, and, and my joke continues to be, if I keep uh, talking so positively about Capital One, I want them to send me a free credit card that I can demonstrate how to use, and I don't have to pay it off. I know this question is going to come up. Jerry, you say don't use a service. Don't use a bank to service to transfer the money. Jerry, aren't you still using Capital One? Isn't that an online bank account? Yes, it is. Aren't you still using a service? That's a really good question. And I figured out the answer. The reason that Capital One can do this for essentially free is this. When I make a transfer from my other U.S. bank account into my Capital One online account, they hold the money for a couple of days. So if I transfer $1,000, they'll immediately put $500 in my account and they're keeping $500 uh, for a few days. And they're using that money to make money. That's what banks do. They use your money to make money. They invest your money, the balance in your accounts, whether it's a checking account or a savings account or a CD or whatever it is, they take your money and they invest it to make money. That's what banks do. So that's how Capital One is making money on me. But it's of no consequence to me whatsoever. The money is that I'm transferring into Capital One, where it's coming from isn't making me any money anyway. It's in a savings account. My Social Security is deposited into a savings account automatically by the federal government. Well, it's sitting there in that savings account until I transfer it to Capital One, and they're not paying me anything. It's like, I don't even know what it is. It's nothing. It's like 18 cents a month or something in interest earned by me. So what difference does it make to me if it's sitting over here and not transferred or if it's transferred and U.S. or Capital One is holding it for a while? This is not a, this is not a detriment to me. It's not costing me money compared to something else. That's how Capital One does it. Now, I don't know about other transfer services. I just know about what I do, and it's not costing me any money to get my dollars transferred into pesos. Hey, thanks for watching. That's enough for today. I know that some of you get this and that this video is not going to be of much value to you because you understand these things as well as I do and maybe even better. Um, but for those of you who are still going to tell me that you're okay because you have this great deal about Citibank transfers to Banamax, please check out the exchange rate spread. Banks don't do things for free. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.